Howdy folks, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am your host, the Mighty Bjorn, and today for you, I have a Bjorn's Mighty Thoughts video. I'm going to be taking time talking about some tracked vehicles here today, or, well, a tracked vehicle. This is the CV90 Molnir. It's actually the first time I've ever heard of this vehicle. It's kind of one of those things that I came across my radar while I was cruising the internet, and uh, I started doing a little bit more digging and actually found this vehicle to be pretty interesting. So this is actually from BAE Systems, and essentially what you have is, is a CV90 hull, and then you have a twin 120 millimeter mortar turret system, which I just think this is so cool, especially because the CV90, I think, is a really rad vehicle, very high mobility, and it's kind of like a become a universal chassis where it can do anything from being an APC to a light tank. And now, apparently, it's an artillery system. Well, a light artillery system, if you will. And just taking some time, showing some footage, footage here of some demos they have done with the CV-90. Understand that this is currently in service with Sweden, from what I can understand. They started building these things, or the contracts went out for these things in 2019, and they would start building these things in 2020. And apparently, from what I can gleam, this information could be incorrect, is that these are actually in service now with Sweden. And this thing is just a really good idea. Now, there's another similar system, but it's a more expensive system, which is known as the Amos. And this is another turret system that it can actually be put on different types of chassis, including the CV-90. Now, this thing is crewed by a three- or four-man crew from what I can see. It looks like it's pretty much primo, though, with a four-man crew. And what it looks like is it looks like it's got two loaders, a driver, and then it would have probably like a gunner commander setup going on. But you could probably strip that down to one loader if necessary, or maybe one loader would act as a gunner instead I'm not quite sure on the three or four man crew part because it is not an auto loader system. It is a completely manual loader system. As you could see there a bit ago, the loaders was actually putting the rounds on the tray, loading tray, and then they were pushing the rounds up into place and then they would load into the barrels from there. So that's actually a pretty cool system, I think. That's a really good way of doing it while being cheap and effective, actually. Now, from what I can tell, it's a rate of fire, 16 rounds per minute with eight for the sustained fire. You have to understand with mortars, mortars, artillery, and et cetera, there's the rounds, the initial rounds per minute, which in this case, it's 16. And basically for the first, usually it's two to three minutes, it can fire at its maximum rate of fire. And then they have to slow down the rate of fire because of the heat buildup that you get. So that's where the eight rounds of sustained fire comes in. Basically, for any long-term shooting, it's going to be eight rounds per minute. Now, with the standard ammunition, it, can, it has a range of nine kilometers. So that's actually a pretty good range for a mortar system. And then it's got a 15-kilometer range for the extended range ammunition that can be loaded on this thing, which pretty much... Just about reaches like a 105 millimeter light artillery gun. So that's pretty good. It's not quite as good as a 105 millimeter, but understand there's some advantages to mortars. The big thing with mortars is, is they tend to have faster rates of fire. And they tend to be able to maintain that faster rate of fire for an extended period of time versus the 105s. The other thing is it's it's got a really high angle of climb and a really steep angle of drop. So essentially you can drop this thing almost straight down onto a target, which gives an advantage for mostly fortified positions where you want the shell to be on top versus kind of direct in front. Now, of course, 120 millimeter ammo, it's there's... For mortar shells, there's a couple different types, and from what I understand, this can has all kinds of different types. The ones I'm familiar with off the top of my head is high explosive, smoke, white phosphorus, 
as well as I don't know if they use them so much anymore, but Star Cluster. Now, illumination ammo, like Star Clusters, that might not get used so much nowadays, but I'm sure it's still available. But with how common night vision optical equipment nods are within militaries around the world, particularly for militaries that this is going to serve with, um, Star Cluster might, it, it still might be there, but it's just not commonly used. Now, the system itself, from what I understand, looking at the specs, it holds about 100 rounds of ammunition. Looks like about 60 rounds of ammo in the bustle. So that's awesome. And of course, the bustle, it also holds another 40 in the hull, but the bustle's probably is going to be the primo spot to get the ammo from. And I like how they did the racks here. And the racks actually look protected for the most part from the crew. Or at least from what I can judge, they they probably have some kind of door system there. Now, the next thing is, is this thing takes about two minutes to set up. So basically, whenever it gets into a position, it takes roughly two minutes for it to set up and fire. That's actually pretty damn good compared to some other mobile mortar systems that you have out there on the market. And then basically, the teardown, so that way it can get on the move again, takes about a minute. So that's not bad in itself. That keeps the system pretty mobile. Quick, get into position, fire fire some volleys, and then get out of position. And for, you know, shooting and scooting anymore is so important. With drone technology, satellite imagery, the whole nine yards, there's the, the idea of sitting around with an emplaced mortar system is just a bad idea. Um, and that's definitely starting to rear its ugly head when it comes to the Ukrainian war. Now, that being said, I'm not saying that kind of thing's going to go away because I don't think it's going to go away anytime soon, especially when it comes to long-range artillery. But with mortar systems, I think the mobile shoot and scoot is going to be the future of mortar systems. Of course, there's a lot of advantages to it because, yeah, you can shoot, scoot, and hopefully your position won't be exposed. Because what happens then is you have to start worrying about counter-artillery, airstrikes, things of that nature. Now, one disadvantage with a system like this is price tag. Now, that being said, the Molnir system here for the CV-90 is actually cheaper than the AMO system. And looking at the two systems, if I was to purchase a system for, per se, I had a military I had to fund, with weapon systems, I would actually choose this system because it's the cheaper system. It looks like it's fairly easy to function, and it looks like, at least on paper and going by what's being said about this system, it looks like a fairly good system, and it's built on a CV-90 chassis. So you have options there because you can actually modify the CV-90 to do other things. Now, that being said, as I said, too, you can also put an AMOS on the CV-90. So even still, if you have, you know, you're a country with CV-90s, you can go either or, or a combination, both. Now, from what I understand, another disadvantage here with this thing is it's actually only got a 60-degree traverse left and right. It's not a full 360-degree traverse system. I'm not quite sure why that's the case. There was no indications that I could find on the information of why. Now, another thing I'm not 100% sure of is if you can't give them both barrels at once. I doubt it, but that would be pretty rad. And still, you can drop two artillery, two 120-millimeter mortar rounds in rapid succession onto a target, and then you're going to figure that you're going to have multiple of these actually operating together. So you're going to have probably anywhere from four to eight operating together, that's a hell of a lot of firepower getting dropped on top of your head in a pretty quick, rapid succession. Now, current mobile systems, or at least one I'm actually somewhat familiar with because I've actually done some training on it, is actually the M113 system. There is also a striker variant, but essentially, as you can see here, it's a single mortar tube 
pretty much it's an infantry mortar tube, but it's mounted onto a special base that's put into the M113 as well as the striker. And this is the primary mobile mortar system that is being used by a lot of militaries around the world. And it's mostly because the M113 is such a widespread system. And I could see, like, sitting here looking at this Molnir system, it definitely looks like a huge step forward compared to the old M113 system. Not saying the M113 system's bad. It does work. It does do the job. And it's really dirt cheap, even compared to this system. But this system has so many advantages that that one doesn't have. Now, here in the United States, we don't use the CV-90. But I tell you what, right now, just as my personal opinion, with the MPF being recently acquired by the United States Army, I think this would be a great system to see actually on the hull of the MPF light tank. And also that allows the MPF light tank to be more than just a tank. You know, that that gives the opening to use it even as a mobile howitzer system. So I think that would be really rad. And I kind of hope that's where the Army goes. Is like, hey, this, this, this Molnir system looks really good. Can we put it on an MPF? Because like... This this definitely looks like the way to go going forward. But either ways, folks, I'm going to wrap the video up at that. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Thank you very much for tuning in. And please, folks, help me out as a YouTuber. Share this video around and comment down below. What is your thoughts about the Molnir mobile howitzer or mobile mortar system that is on the CV-90? Anyway, folks. Thanks again for tuning in and have yourself a wonderful day.